Welcome to Land of House. I'm Seth. I'm here with Eric, who has an off-grid property, and he is building a yurt. He has graciously offered to show me around, and so I'm going to hand it over to him, and we will learn about his off-grid property with the yurt that he is constructing. I bought this property a few years ago and, and uh, thought about building a house up over here on this ridge, and uh, after learning how expensive the power and the everything was going to cost for that, I thought, well, my idea originally was to build a house and set something up here temporarily until the house was done and then move up there and then um, like a camper or something. And then I thought, well, maybe if I could get a yurt it would be cool because I could build the house or build the yurt while I was building the house living in here. And then once the house was finished, I could uh, have a, my pottery studio in here. I like to do pottery. Got hooked up with a guy uh, that actually made these yurts. Uh, he's no longer in business. He moved to Portugal. But uh, he was gracious enough to let me come to his place, and uh, I actually had to take this one down. Help him. He helped me disassemble it, and I took a bunch of notes. And uh, have in, I'm in the process of reassembling it now, and, and I've been living in it for uh, over a year now, completely off the grid. And uh, I'm really enjoying it and really learning a lot. And uh, we can go inside and check it out. This is home for me right now. It's uh, 22 feet in diameter, and um, the as you see, the, the power, there's no power uh, units or the power from the hydro is in here um, or, or a bathroom. It, it's, it's so small that I wanted to really maximize the living space and, um, and I'm okay with walking next door to use the bathroom and taking a shower and, and everything. So this is essentially the kitchen area and um, the next, next thing on my list is to complete the countertops. Um, that'll come pretty soon. Uh, living room uh, right here. This is the little uh, mini split that Spencer recommended. That thing is really, really cool. Um, if you're off the grid, certainly get one of those. Call him and ask him what it is. That really requires very, very little energy. Um, what I've learned through that thing is um, it has several settings. It has a heat, a cool, a fan, and a dry. And if I just keep it on dry, which acts as a dehumidifier, it, it's unlike the ones that you would normally just stick in your basement, which generate a lot of heat. Uh, the outside unit to this thing is where all the heat comes out and cold air comes out of that. And once it's up and running, it'll run on like 160, 170 watts, you know, less than 200 watt light bulbs, which is super, super cool. Uh, yeah, this is a little living room. I've got, uh, it's still, you know, in the process. I'm going to build some shelves here. I've got some maple that I'm going to saw into slabs and build some shelves. I've got a record player and a uh, pretty large record collection. And, so I'll get this entertainment center done. That's not top of my list, but uh, that's coming. And then in here, this little area back here, uh, this is all sawmill lumber. And I just built these little walls here to sort of add some privacy to this back corner, which is which is my bedroom. Um, old door I found, a guy gave me to reclaim it and made a little pocket door out of it here. Yeah, and this is, uh, this is, this is the bedroom, you know, it's a queen size bed. It's tight, but it, it, it works. Um, I originally had thought in still May, I built this so I could build a wall here and then have some joists up there and then make a, a floor up top where I could put another bed or maybe have some storage. Um, but I'm not sure. It's kind of nice to lay in the bed at night and look out through the oculus there and, and see the stars. And uh, this is a gigantic map of the, all the counties in the United States that my neighbor gave me years ago. and. I've just hung on to it and I think I'm going to put this against that wall instead of trying to cover it with something I'll just that'd be kind of a cool wall cover. Um, yeah but this is it and I don't really know what else to say about in here. <laughs> um, it's it's cool I mean it, it in my opinion has a good feel. Oh th this uh so when I I, I I took the yurt down it, he had a yurt community up there I think there were maybe maybe ten of them and uh, this one was the community kitchen for, for all the, the yurt community. And so this was actually, it says community kitchen. They they did that, I don't know who did that, but it was done years ago. And it was actually like the trim for the, the French door coming in. Um, this is not a typical design. You know, these windows are certainly out of a house. Because a yurt has no eaves, water would run straight down the roof, straight down the sides, and it was hitting this metal ledge out there and splashing up onto the glass, and it would run down the glass and under. And so I built these, I call them brows. I don't know what, what the proper name is, but it's just a piece of Advantech about that big that goes all the way around and sheds the water 
uh, away from, from this entrance here. But it's kind of cool to have these big windows where I can look out. In the fall, it's magnificent. All the, the colors of the leaves are just really, really, really pretty. Um, like I said, being off grid for a while, I'm, I'm learning some things every day. And, and uh, you know, there's a lot of amenities that I've done without. And the, the biggest thing for me, like the thing I really want more than anything, is the kitchen sink. <laughs> It's just so nice to wash dishes in the kitchen sink where, you know, now I've got to go outside. I've got a, like a turkey cooker thing and I just heat water up and wash them outside and that kind of stinks sometimes. So kitchen sink is coming soon. Um, and then I'm going to probably do something creative with the backsplash, or, you know, around through the kitchen there. This is my, my heat. I've got a wood stove there that is really too big for this size space. I mean, it gets so hot in here. I have to open the windows at night sometimes. Um, but it's great. It's great to come into a nice, nice warm place, you know. Um, and all, you know, all the woodwork, that's hardwood floor and stuff and tile and all that. I've done that all myself. And then my mother and my, my girlfriend insisted that I bring some plants up. So, and I'm glad. It's kind of cool. It makes it a little more homey, you know. Um, but as I said earlier, I don't have a, 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 a lot of power consumption. I have the little refrigerator. Some LED lights, this is LED, the mini split, and then I guess my biggest consumer power is probably the water pump down in the spring reservoir. And so I guess if, if I had anything to say about anybody that was considering living off the grid, it's awesome, but it's really not for everybody, I don't think. I mean, there, there are some sacrifices that you have to make. You know, when you're generating your own electricity, uh, there's a lot of maintenance involved, no matter what it is, I guess, solar and hydro and everything. So you have to really reconsider what your power needs are. You know, like I, I can never run an electric dryer and, um, you know, electric hot water heater and electric range, everything that's propane, you know. So you just have to consider all that stuff if that's what you're thinking about doing. But it's, it's a lot of fun. It's very rewarding, you know. You just have to have a lot of time to do it. There'll be a couple of decks here and some steps that lead up into there. That's the, uh, the power. But I will have in there a shower and the composting toilet and that, that kind of stuff. Yeah, 250, you know, 253, 252. Up here, I've done some grading out in there. That's really where I've got all the material stored for now. It's the siding for the building and uh, some, some uh, sawmill lumber, some pine that I'm going to use to side some of the inside stuff in there. Um, did the, uh, the chimney, the uh, adapter kit or whatever they call that thing that you can get for a yurt, I wasn't really crazy about the design of that thing. So that is nothing more than a uh, terracotta thimble that I bought from a local supplier and framed with a two by, treated two by 12 and then put the concrete board on either side. And then the thimble is, is just supported by the two pieces of concrete board. So it's got a tremendous air space around it. And I have no concerns whatsoever about it transferring any heat into the fabric and, you know, causing a catastrophic fire or anything like that. Yeah, so it's essentially uh, those three beams, you know, you see the outside ones are notched out to carry these two 2 by 10s So they're sitting solidly into that, but I wanted something solid to bolt everything else to. So, it's, you know, these two are carriage bolted to there, same thing there. And then this member here uh, just gave me a surface to get two more. So I came out with the eight... Uh, you know, eight main framing members over each of these concrete pillars. And then uh, have just been trying to brace things up as I go. I'm going to probably take these off eventually and uh, I can find some, you know, poplar about that big. Make some poplar X braces. I think it'll look better. Um, and I could mount it, a lot, I think, a little more substantially. And I'm going to have those people come spray that stuff under the, under the bottom here. The closed cell foam stuff. But like the floor, the subfloor, the, okay, the center post, I've got one of those big spikes in there. I don't know if it's 20 penny or what that is, but it's a great big spike right in the middle that I needed to make a circle. And um, so I got the subfloor on, and then, you know, this is 22 feet, so I went out 11 feet with a piece of string and a magic marker, and that's just not accurate. I mean, they, they came <laughs> together like this. You know, I guess it's just the string stretching and that thing moving in and out. So I uh, took... I knew about where it should be, so I found some lime green marking paint that you mark the ground with, and I walked all the way around the perimeter and just sprayed about this much, you know, about that wide, a band all the way around it, and took a 12 foot one by four, cause uh, drilled a hole in that that would hook on that uh, spike, 
and then measured from there very accurately out to 11 feet and put a three and a half inch wood screw through that so there's no give anywhere and only had it sticking out maybe that far and then scratched a very accurate line through the paint where it's easy to see and then just zip. How deep are your footers? How about that deep, I guess? <laughs> I mean, they're in there. They're as deep as I could get, you know, until I started hitting rock and stuff, you know? <laughs> that one, there's a lot in that one. Um, it's a big old hole. I had a pull of gigantic, I did so good. I didn't hit a single root in any of these. And when I got to that one, I mean, I had a root off of one of these big maples, probably this one, I guess I'm imagining. It was a tree in itself. I had to chainsaw that thing out of there. <laughs> a lot of work. And uh, tell me about your water. Okay, so uh, just recently got the running water up and running. You can see the uh, water line going through the woods. Got to get that buried before winter. But down here, I have uh, two, two reservoirs. And um, the spring is collected in two places. It's a very simple design. It's uh, hydraulic cement onto bedrock, just enough to put water in a pipe. And that's all it is. And then got some gravel behind it and some rubber over the top of it. And there, both of those uh, collection points are in the bank, so to minimize any kind of rain water running into them. Yep, so right now, you know, summertime, water tables are at their, at their lowest. This is the overflow. So that's, that's what's coming out of my spring currently. And I've measured it before. That's maybe a half a gallon a minute. Um, and that doesn't sound like much, you know, but if you think about it, that's, uh, that's 30 gallons an hour. That's 720 gallons in a day. You know, it just keeps the tanks full. And um, this is the main reservoir. Um, the water comes out there in between Seth's feet. Um, this has to be buried before wintertime, obviously. That's a job for my 16 year old son. And um, so it doesn't freeze, but this runs back up to the yurt way up there. This is the water coming in from the settling tank, which is above us. And what I was trying to explain before, you could probably see by looking in here. Maybe kind of dark in here. If you get over here, Seth, you can see it. You see the overflow. That's the overflow design in this tank. You see how it's got an open T on the top? And the water actually comes in from probably four feet below that. So it comes in there up high and comes out from at the bottom of that PVC pipe that goes down. So it's it's constantly circulating. And I had to put the T in there so it didn't siphon. Just uh, the stand pipe in that one comes straight up and you can see the water level in there where it's, the condensation is. So the water comes in, same same setup, it comes into the top of that tank and then, but the, the uh, overflow in that one is just a single piece of pipe that is at that darker line, that level. And so that gives the, set the uh, heavies an opportunity to settle out before the clean water comes off the top and into here. And then this pipe here is the actual, like the pipe that comes out of this tank and goes up to the yurt, that is this pipe that comes out of that one. So there's a, uh, each, each one of these tanks has three, three pipes. There's a, an intake and then an output and an overflow. And both of those valves are in the very bottom of each tank. And, um, this one, the overflow, as we've seen, comes out right down there. This one is the output, I guess you would say. And it, as it goes into the bottom of that tank, it just stops down there. There's no piping going up or down. And that's deliberate. That's so, um, if, when I open that valve, it's sucking all the water from the bottom of the tank. So that, if it gets deep in sediment, I can stir it all up and get it in suspension and then shut the valve off coming to this first. So I don't put muddy water in this tank. Um, but then just get it all stirred up and then hit that valve on the bottom and it'll drain all the muddy water out down to there. Thank you to Seth for coming way out here and, and uh, hanging out with me and videoing all this and uh, having a lot of good input with, with everything, with the hydro, with the water system and everything. He's had a lot of good things to, to put into the mix there that I'll certainly consider. Spencer Langston for uh, providing all the support and all the equipment and uh, Chad a barber from Elgin for the uh, for the box down there. It's it's been a wonderful experience. It's a learning experience every day. Uh, appreciate you guys hanging out and checking out my yurt. I'm sorry it's not finished, but maybe in a year or so, when uh, Seth can come back, it'll look a little neater in there. The building will be done and um, have a little more to, more to say and show. But thanks.